Hello everybody. This is my return to YouTube after a long while. Um, I don't know, maybe my heart was broken by Samsung, but the last reviews I put up were of Samsung cameras. Um, if you want to know more about that, uh, it can be found at www.ericawoods.com. Um, but for now, I'm going to start off with a recent find that really has inspired me to start this up again. This is the lovely Comtex 137 MA Quartz. Now, I'll be honest with you, this started with a search at first for a Leica R5. Why? I don't know. I like Leica. Who doesn't like Leica? I figured instead of going the rangefinder route, which I'd done before, um, this time I tried a SLR route. But the only thing is, the bodies were quite affordable. I found one in very good shape at keh.com for, what was it? It was a hundred and $99, I think the body was. I was like, wow, does it look to be in good condition? All black, beautiful looking piece of equipment. Only problem is that when I started looking for lenses, things got out of hand rather quickly. Now that led me to say, hey, I like contacts. Why not look for a contacts SLR? Started with, of course, the RTS Legend, RTS2, RTS2, RTS3. But it just so happened that I tripped upon a Contax 137 MA Quartz when I went on the website. I was immediately intrigued. Um, I looked it up, I looked up the reviews, I couldn't believe how much it cost. It was very reasonably priced. Um, and then I basically bought it. It said bargain grade. I'd, I purchased many things bargain grade from KEH before with no concerns whatsoever. Um, went for it said hey why not got it got a reasonably priced to me anytime you can get a zeiss lens for under 100 under 150 dollars that's a 50 millimeter prime for under f2 or greater than f2 aperture you're doing pretty good and i found another bargain grade 50 millimeter f 1.7 yeah they had a 1.4 but just like with nikon nikon has i think i have 50 mil f 1.4 and that was was I deemed good enough for me. They have a 1.2, of course, that's gorgeous, but I couldn't make the sense of the extra price for the small gain in aperture. And the same thing happened with the contacts. So got, long story short, basically $53 for the body, believe it or not, $53. And for the lens, I picked it up for $133, both bargain grades. So now we're talking with shipping, everything, I was gonna get a Contax 137 auto winder inbuilt camera with aperture priority, my favorite, and I'm going to get a Zeiss lens, a planar 50 f1.7, and you're telling me I'm going to get all of that for less than the price of a like R5 body, and not much more than an RTS2 body, if I'm correct on that one. So basically, pulled the trigger, but then I got it. And I have to admit, I'm not surprised. I have, I have other contacts cameras, 35 millimeter cameras. The build quality was excellent. Now you see it here shining in its naked state. What ended up happening is as with a lot of these, the body, the uh, leather went bad on it. And it didn't bother me at first, it was fine. I even went online, I found a place and if I'm gonna post a link to my blog and in, in my blog post on it, I give the website that I found in another review where basically you can order a whole nother skin for this, a leather skin for this for $18 shipping included from Japan. So of course I went ahead and purchased that. But while I was waiting, I lost patience. At first I was gonna polish this but then I said, no, you know, let me let me give it a shot. Let me see what it looks like once I take this off. Now, I can't lie, I was a little bit worried because my concern was that I was going to take it off and it was just going to be a mess. But that wasn't the case. Um, instead of having like multicolored underneath uh, large exposed holes in it, it was very clean and quite attractive. Fortunately, the metal, as you can see, mostly matches, especially in the back. The metal and the rest of the camera there's one small hole here so what i did is i kept a little bit of the pleatherette and just put that over that um 
not that I'm going to be walking around with this in the rain anyway, but I'm just, a, you know, why I have an exposed opening on a camera if you don't need to. So I saved a little bit of the material and put that on here. Let me see how close we can get to close it up. Now, so again, now what we have, let's recap. We have a 50 millimeter, my favorite, F17 Zeiss planar lens, clean. I always, I often ask myself when I get things from KEH bargain grade sometimes, I'm amazed how good a condition they're in. Not only that, we have, let me get this position right, and an aperture priority auto winder runs on four AA batteries, which is just crazy to me. But um, if you've never seen it, opens up in there and the batteries. And four regular run of the mill, no crazy spec, no um, having to try to find battery adapters. Um, and then you have an auto wind camera with aperture priority. And I'll go over some of the controls later, but it's just a beautiful camera. Now, let me go over the first thing is going to be pricing. This camera was listed bargain grade at KH for $53 in excellent condition. This then, let's see, I've already covered, just going down my list. History. I'm not going to go into great detail. Just you Google it, 137 MA Quartz. You'll find plenty of sites that'll give you a great history. Bottom line, this is a camera made by Yashica with the contact's name under license from Zeiss. So, German name, Japanese engineering. There we have it. Why did I buy this one rather than the other versions? Number one, this is what they had at KEH.com, to be honest. Um, that's how I found out about it. There was a model before called MD, but this has two big gains over that. This has full shutter control. Um, from what I've read, the MD, you can only have, you only have access to automatic aperture priority, flash sync, and bulb mode. This here gives you full control of the full range. As you can see right here. Now, as you've noticed, it's a little bit of an oddity that this is have this has the shutter speed on the left side of the body, but it's no real big deal. Why didn't I get the RTS line? I mean, really, again, this is such an excellent value, and it uses the same lenses. Why not purchase this one? And then another thing, the auto winder. This has the auto winder built in. To me, that's a big deal. Um, you see right there, you have access to single shot, continuous, and timer mode right there. You want to test, you know, let's, we'll go through and we'll turn it on. There's on, oh, sorry, there's off, on. And that turns on all the uh, aperture priority and all the ability to take the shot. If you take an exposure and you want to lock it, it's simple. It's just like the Contax G1 and G2. You just take it and flick it and lock it once you have it set, and then the auto exposure is locked. You want to test the battery, simply flick it the other direction, and there's your battery test. While we're at it, why don't we go on all, all around this camera? So I already showed you how to control the auto wind. There's on off button. Right here under this flap, that's what you hit when you want to rewind the film manually, which is the way this film is. It does not have auto rewind, it's just auto wind. Um, this is the button you press. This is, loosens the exposure lock, so you can change that. I already showed you the shutter control wheel here, and there's the how you shut the, set the ISO, the ASA, for the film. On the back, very simple. This is a little line right here, and when you shoot a shot just as a quick eye verification this spins around when it takes a shot i would show you that now except for the fact that i have film in this but okay go over a few more things now there's going to be a lot more detail in the blog post i'll put that link in the youtube video but suffice it to say why did i get it um there's a couple of reasons why 
that this is actually a great camera aesthetics just I believe is a gorgeous camera one of the best looking ones I have so far regardless of any price um, and I couldn't for this sake I have a few SLRs but probably the one I would compare to most would be let me make an adjustment up until getting this my favorite was the Nikon FE now same will go for any of the other Nikon F cameras from this era but if we see the size comparison here you can see there's a similar cameras I'll put it like this let's see aesthetics size beautiful camera but here's the thing this Nikon as beautiful as it is it's manual wind now I don't mind manual wind but it is nice to have auto wind when it works well now how do we do that uh, I purchased for this just to have it available the MD12 auto winder and battery grip but now you see what happens to the size of these two cameras auto wind auto wind now this has made this reasonably sized camera beautiful but fairly large so what do we have on here what else can we get that's another reason I like this camera uh, this camera comes with aperture priority aperture lock as I showed you built-in auto winder with single constant and timer modes multiple readouts in a viewfinder in viewfinder not only will it show you the shutter speed which is common but it'll also show you the aperture in the top of the frame and if you go again if you go to the blog post I will I, sh I have a picture of the viewfinder the view through viewfinder um, and on the left hand side you also have the film count which is really nice when you look through a camera and I have to imagine especially if you're doing a and um, if you're doing constant, it would be nice to see the show, the uh, picture count advancing, the exposure count advancing. Um, you have exposure compensation. You have TTL flash, which is nice. And again, here, not the top of the line, but here's a flash I picked up. This was also KEH for less than $30. I think it was $25 or $29. I picked that up. And it's really nice to have that. I mean, and with this, you have full automatic TTL. This is a fill flash that goes on the front. You can turn it on and off here. Um, you can adjust the zoom here. And I understand these also work with the G, context G cameras as well. Um, let's see, as far as lenses. Another beautiful thing about this is not only do you have access to Zeiss glass, um, full range, at reasonable prices compared to Zeiss glass on other uh, camera mounts, but here you also have this is a Yashica, which I understand these lenses are very good as well. This is a 135 f2.8 that cost me all of in built hood. I always love that. All of $72 to purchase. And just to give you an idea. And even though it is Yashica mount, you see it does nothing to break the aesthetics of the camera. Still a very nice looking piece of equipment and then let's do the full regalia uh, and here's the other thing not only do you have Zeiss glass not only do you have Yashica glass because these were popular across all the different types of cameras you also have third-party lenses I've seen ones from Vivitar and in fact I ordered a Soligar off eBay a 28 millimeter f2.5 for $34 um, so there right away we have a full lineup of lenses for not a whole lot of spend so just on lenses alone we have $133 for this lens here a 50 millimeter f17 we have $72 for 135 f28 and we have $34 for a 28 millimeter f28 millimeter f25 so all in three lenses for this camera for $233 
We have a camera body, $53, so uh, you may have to check my math later. I may regret trying to do this on the fly, but I think we're at about, what, 72 plus 34, sort of 172 plus 34, red, what, $106? We're looking at another lens for $133. So now we're looking at a little under $240 for three lenses and a $53 body. So now we're looking at in the neighborhood of $300 for a full setup. Now I don't know about you, but even though this is film, it's easy to spend well over $300 just on the camera body, let alone lenses. And to have a whole setup for this amount, I think it's just a screaming bargain. And not, and we're not talking about garbage. We're not talking about, we're down on features. We basically have everything you could possibly need short of autofocus, which is fine with me. So that's about it. I'll wrap it up here. This is, I'll put the camera up, what I have so far, and I'll update my blog post once I get the skin in the leather wrap that I may or may not put on it because actually I like the way it looks this way. The only reason I'm going, I will likely put it on is I can't lie, this is like a wet bar soap at times when trying to hold on to it. So I tend to put a death grip on it. But now we have body, lens, lens, flash for not a whole lot of spend. And I'll also update you when I get that Soligar 28 mm F2.5. See that, see if that's any good. It may be that, not be that great. I heard it may be a little soft wide open, but at $34, I can forgive a lot on a camera, on a, on a lens. Well, that's it for now. When I have opportunity, I will start posting photos online and I'll put the links in the blog post I've already put up here for it and they will be on my Flickr page as well. So that's it everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and happy shooting.